Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Steve and thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey of sorts to explore my English and Irish roots. I am of English and Irish ancestry and I don't really know much about the two countries I'm, I'm ultimately from. Um, you know, my, my family's been in America for many, many, many generations. Um, but I think it's time for me to learn, you know, ultimately where I come from. And um, that's what this channel's about. And so I'm going to be reacting to lots of videos about England and Ireland. Um, I don't really know a ton. Um, you know, I know the basics, I guess, kind of where they are in the world and whatnot. Um, but I, I'm excited to start this journey and really kind of figure out who I am um, by knowing the culture and, and the geography and the politics and, you know, whatever else about England and Ireland. So um, anyway, I figured what better way to start than to look at the difference between the UK, Great Britain and England. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I don't know if I was taught this in school or if I just, you know, have forgotten. Um, but I don't really know, like, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to say that, uh, that, um, yeah, I, I'm not really sure, but I think, I think England and Great Britain are the same thing. I'm not sure. And I think, I, I'm not sure about this, but I think England is like, makes up part of the UK or the United Kingdom. I, I don't know. I'm excited to learn. This would be a great start to this journey. So anyway, um, uh, let's get started. This video is by CGP Greg, or CGP Gray, excuse me. Welcome to the United Kingdom and a whole lot more explained by me, CGP Gray. The United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to these questions? I do, and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead okay. is a country of countries. It can Right, that makes sense. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, is Ireland a part of the UK? It's got to be, because isn't that, isn't that Ireland right there? Yeah, it's got to be. Um, so, England and Ireland? And... Ugh. I wonder if Scotland is a part of the UK. Anyway, I just wanted to say I think it's amazing that, um, you know, I never really think about, you know, the United Kingdom and Ireland are uh, fairly small um, in regards in, and their island nations. It's just it's interesting. Contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. Okay. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And, often forgotten even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country- Wait, 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 wait. Wales is separate from England? What? I always thought that Wales and England were like the same thing and I thought Wales was just I don't even know what I really thought. I just didn't think that they were two separate countries. That's interesting. And also, Northern Ireland is a part of the UK, but not, I guess, Southern Ireland. Wow. Tree has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters. Is that true? No matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to... Sorry, I don't want to pause this much, but is that true? Do the English and the Irish not really like each other? Comment in the comments below and let me know if that's uh, really true or if that's just kind of a stereotype. Vote on English laws, despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four <laughs> constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is what? the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Unlike oh. England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain oh. is the largest island among the British wow. Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is that often used sense. to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone 
on with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true, as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, <laughs> such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish Hebrides, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country, like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. Wait, what? The island of Ireland contains on a two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even Wait, though England- What? Okay, wow, that, that is amazing. <laughs> I never knew that, wow. So wait, like, so Ireland itself is considered two separate countries? And Great Britain makes up basically... So Britain is... The Great Britain is um, England and Scotland. But Ireland isn't a part of Great Britain. Wow, that's... That's amazing. I, I, I don't know. That's just... That's, that's interesting. England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France, but that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland okay. has on it two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, wow. while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern uh, Ireland, form the United Kingdom. There are still many unanswered questions, such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this, we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English-speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of world's land wow nearly a fourth of the world That's people. amazing. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. Wait, India? India broke away kind of just like America did. Is that what they're saying there? Wow. Hmm. But then... Okay, Canada. I knew Canada was under some sort of rule or whatnot of uh, Great Britain, I guess? Anyway. Anyway. These want to be nations struck a deal with the Empire, where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for okay. a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated wow. legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. I Who created this corporation? Mm. God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God, and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the Crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with a reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion, Anglicanism. Mm -hmm. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. What amazing architecture. Seriously, like, you know, there's some there's some nice buildings over here in America, but, you know, obviously nothing like that because there's so much more history, you know, a longer history, you know, over in Europe. Um, and the, just seeing architecture like that is just absolutely amazing. It just really is. I think as I've gotten older, I appreciate, you know, just buildings like that. That's just that's just amazing. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Tuvalu. Wow. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth oh, realm, they are hmm. not considered independent nations but are granted local autonomy by the Crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Ecrateria and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan de Cunha, Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pitcairn Islands. Wait, so everybody born in these locations also have British citizenship? 
that's not the, the but that's not the same for like you know, Canada, New Zealand, whatnot. Um, those wouldn't have British citizenship, I don't think. This is this is um, this is pretty complicated. Wow, this, there's so many different places uh, that are associated with the crown. Um, that is, uh, that Britain is the head of state. I, I, this is a lot to learn. I'm going to have to like rewatch this just to really understand this. Wow. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the crown, which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the crown in the British Isles are the crown dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that okay. still recognize the crown are the Commonwealth realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former empire are the British overseas territories. Wow. Thank you very much for watching. Wow. That, that's amazing. I got to go back. Oh. I gotta go back here. Let's see, where are you at? There. Wow. Wow. I I thought in my head I I knew, I knew the United Kingdom kind of was. You know, like I I knew that England was a part of the United Kingdom. So basically, how this would relate to my ancestry. Uh, Basically, I'm of English, and I have uh, some Northern. I, I was uh, I have some ancestry from Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. So, um, from what I've seen when I've looked at the the cities and whatnot, they were from or the areas. Um, so basically, I would be part of Great Britain. My ancestry would be part of Great Britain under the United Kingdom from the British Isles and then, yeah. And then uh, obviously the Republic of Ireland is separate from the Northern Ireland that is part of the, that's, that's insane. Okay. This is way, way more complicated than I, than I, than I thought it would be. Wow. Okay. This is really interesting. Um, I'm really excited to continue this journey. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I look forward to exploring, um, England and Ireland eventually. I'm going to do just, I'm going to focus on England for a while and the UK um, and Great Britain, obviously. I'm going to focus on those for a while and um, eventually I'll uh, look at some Irish videos. But because um, I want to kind of, you know, kind of get my bearings, you know, about how everything works and whatnot. So, um, anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, please click that like button and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe, leave your comments below. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Until next time, peace.